So, welcome back again. So, in the discussion of evolution equations, so far we have seen uh, heat equation and wave equation and now we are <coughs> some discussion on Schrodinger equation. This may be new to uh, many of you. So, let me just begin with a brief discussion uh, of this equation. So, this is from quantum mechanics. So, it is analogous to the Newton equation uh, for quantum mechanics. So, it describes the dynamics of a quantum particle. Okay. So, let me first write it in as, as you see it in a physics book. So, this equation uh, just let me write that h square by minus 2 m Laplace n psi plus v psi is equal to this i comes. So, this d psi by d t. So, v the real value function. So, So, this is called potential. Okay. So, H is the, the Planck's constant okay. and this m is mass of the quantum particle. So, soon we are going to absorb everything in. <coughs> so, make it everything one mass of the quantum. So, unlike the Newtonian <coughs> mechanics, uh, the particle need not, uh, we can only say that the particle will be at some position x uh, with some probability. Okay. So, <coughs> this psi x t called wave function. So, the physical meaning of that this psi x t square. So, this denotes uh, the probability of the particle that quantum particle being at position x x at time t. Right. So, that is uh, <coughs> the physical meaning of this wave function. So, since the particle has to be somewhere, okay, so obviously, we expect this expect this psi x t square should be 1. So, this is in okay, physical space let me. So, most of my discussion is only in R 3. Okay. <coughs> so, that is a physically relevant thing. Of course, mathematically you can do it for any R n. Okay. So, if initially this wave function satisfy this equation, so this should hold for all t. Right. Okay. So, obviously, already it said that we should expect a unitary operator. Okay. So, that is already uh, hidden in this <coughs> physical statement. Okay. So, now we are going to absorb these constants, Planck's constant and the mass everything and consider this in the simplified form. So, we consider this Schrodinger equation in the form. We consider the equation Schrodinger equation in the form. 
So, you can all absorb them in either uh, T variable or uh, space variable. Okay, so, here I am assuming so no potential. So, the particle is no there, there is no barrier at all potential function means so there will be a barrier. So, there is some resistance, but here it is a free particle. Okay, first <coughs> let us study that. So, it is almost looks like heat equation, but for this uh, factor i okay, just i. So, let me begin with uh, again a Fourier transform treatment. Uh, so, we can see a similar thing to the heat equation, but it is different very different. Okay. So, formally you take the Fourier transform partial Fourier transform only with respect to x variable. So, this is 1 by i. So, d by d t of u cap is equal to minus mod j square u cap okay. and then you this o d e you solve. So, you get u cap j t e to the minus i t j square u cap j. So, this is u cap u 0 is the initial condition. So, we get that. Only thing is there is i sitting here and this function. So, consider this function. In fact, this was discussed in our first part of the course consider the function e to the uh, i x square. Okay, let me just say that t is only a parameter. Okay, so this x in R. This is only a bounded function. Uh, of course, smooth, but this is not in the Schwarz space. Okay, so if Fourier transform and other things uh, cannot be readily taken, but this is a tempered distribution and that is good for us. This is a tempered distribution. So, you may refer to our first part of this course okay, where in fact compute the Fourier transform and other things. Okay. So, this this is good good enough so that we can take Fourier transform, minor Fourier transform and etcetera. Okay. So, we can still play with this uh, <coughs> function though it is not in the Schwarz class, okay. but it is a Schwarz distribution that is fine. Okay. So, here I just write that. So, you just recall from the first course. Okay. So, we have in fact, let me write so, this is also a good exercise for you. The Fourier transform of this exponential i x transpose a x. So, this is most general okay, of j. So, this is for <coughs> So, remember this is only a tempered distribution. So, you have to uh, again this constant of pi may vary depending on the Fourier transform you use. This is determinant of A uh, e to the i pi n by 4 exponential is similar to Gaussian. Okay. So, very much similar to Gaussian, but only with this factor uh, so, where A is a symmetric positive definite matrix. matrix. 
Okay. So, we have the Fourier transform of this function and inverse because inverse transform is also the similar thing right. So, we can uh, do that thing. So, put all this thing together. these things together to get. So, let me just write that u x t this you may not see in many books, but I am just writing it. Uh, e to the minus i pi n by 4 integral r n exponential i mod x minus y square. So, it is convolution, but convolution with a tempered distribution u 0 y So, I am just taking here since we are dividing by t. Okay. So, we will not go in further discussion of this formula, but it is <coughs> uh, you can read the literature more about it. And so, but I just uh, stated here because it looks very similar to the fundamental solution of the heat equation. So, and that Fourier Poisson formula very similar, but for this factor i. So, this even interpretation of this integral uh, you have to be of course, this is a bounded function there is no problem, but you have to be when you take want to take L 2 uh, norm you have to be careful. Okay. So, I will not go further into this formula. So, back to our semi group theory. So, again we want to approach this uh, Schrodinger equation through this semi group theory. So, first I consider this without potential. Okay, so, just in appropriate domains and then we consider with this Laplacian plus potential. Okay. And here we apply the Cato's perturbation result to conclude that this <coughs> this operator. So, this will be a multiplication operator uh, is qualitatively similar to the one with uh, without potential. So, whatever Laplacian whatever property the Laplacian will have the same thing will have for this Laplacian plus V. Okay. So, that is what uh, would like to do. Okay, so, let me begin with the simple case. Uh, okay. So, I just work with R 3 and our main space is L 2. So, again let me not write R 3 every time okay. and we consider this Laplacian operator. So, again just look at that equation. Okay, so, this we have to study this operator of course, that we have done many times, but let me again repeat that. Uh, so, Laplacian with domain equal to H 2 okay, natural one right. This L 2 is necessary because as I said that <coughs> denotes the probability okay let me again say that so this <coughs> for the wave function this denotes the probability of the 
particle being at position x at time and we expect this and okay this that is I 2. So, these are dictated by the physical requirement. Okay. So, this is the setup. Okay. So, let me start with this proposition. So, let me do it <coughs> uh, in somewhat detail so that you can imitate the same proofs wherever I have left them. <coughs> okay, this the linear operator Laplacian with domain H2 is a self adjoint operator. And that immediately, once we prove that proposition, that immediately implies by Stone's theorem uh, I Laplacian generates a unitary group. Okay, and I is coming from the Schrodinger equation itself. Okay, so, let me again show you that. So, there is I there. Okay, so, that so, it is sufficient to show that Laplacian is. So, there are several steps. So, let me just uh, prove. Okay, so, the domain of uh, Laplacian is H2, H2 is clearly uh, <coughs> dense in L2. So, this this first part is very clear. So, delta is a densely defined closed operator, densely defined closed operator. Okay, so, this densely defined is straightforward because 2 is it. Let me just show you uh, because this computations we have to do many times. So, let me just show this part closeness. So, again recall the definition. So, let f k be in the domain of the Laplacian that is H2. Okay. Uh, Fk converges to F in L2 and Laplacian of Fk converges to G in L2. So, what we have to show is to show Uh, f is in H2 and Laplacian of f equal to g. Okay. Of course, everything is in the weak sense this Laplacian, but once you show that. Uh, <coughs> so, how do you prove that? Okay. So, let me just, so any take any test function take any phi in C C infinity, okay. then so this integral f k phi this converges f k converges to f in L 2. So, this is converges to f, okay. but this since f k is in <coughs> H 2, so, this also is uh, let 
okay that that is okay and also we have this Laplace n f k phi converges to g phi okay but this one is f k Laplace f phi okay and then Laplace n phi is again a c infinity function with compact support and that converges to f uh, and now if you look at these things okay so just conclude that f is uh, <coughs> laplace n of f equal to g in the weak sense weak sense but g is in l2 okay so that means laplace n the weak laplace n of f is in l2 and again use Fourier transform just to conclude that H2. Okay, so, the arguments are not always straightforward, so they are using several properties. So, you have to uh, <coughs> do them carefully. Okay, so, next we show next we show uh, Laplace n is symmetric. Okay, so that is Laplace n f g. So this is L two. Okay, so let me write that. So this is f Laplace n g for all f g in H two. So that's the domain of Laplace n. Okay. So, again you begin with smooth functions, so because that is how we generally do. So, for smooth functions, because we can integrate by parts and there are no boundary terms for smooth functions phi and psi, when I space smooth they are c, in, c, c infinity. We have Laplace n phi psi is equal to I can integrate by parts. So, that is right and similarly so and phi Laplace and psi is minus So, that shows so for smooth functions we have this relation. And next to use density to conclude uh, that is symmetric. So, we have a densely defined <coughs> closed operator which is symmetric and in order to conclude to conclude Laplace n is self adjoint. we need to show plus or minus i belongs to the resolvent set. Okay. So, that means, so for any f in L 2, we should be able to solve uh, this plus or minus i there should be a solution of this. Okay. So, we should find uh, u in H 2 satisfying this. Okay. 
but again this is our familiar Laplace equation you have seen it empty number of times now. So, you again you take the Fourier transform. So, that is uh, one strong tool you keep on using that. So, this taking Fourier transform what we get. So, this is plus or minus i uh, u cap uh, minus this is minus. Okay, so, formally informally okay, this u cap defined by this. And because this is complex we are saved. So, this denominator is never 0. So, you can again take this uh, and show that it is n L 2. So, indeed we get so, this is slightly different from what we, we have seen earlier, but because now there is a complex coefficient, but that is fine. Okay. So, we will find that. Okay. So, moreover, okay, let me just uh, okay. that is the one thing and uh, okay. in fact, you can also start with uh, <coughs> f smooth and then you show that uh, this in fact, it is sufficient to show that the image of this okay, the if you again look at the general theory. So, conclude conclude okay, this this is sufficient for us uh, image of plus or minus i minus Laplacian is here. Since we already have closeness and symmetry, even in, in fact, it suffices to show that this image is dense in L2. Okay, so for that, you would just need to take this smooth functions and write work out this. Okay, by taking the inverse transform. Okay, so final conclusion. So just. conclusion is that the Laplacian is self adjoint So, again go back and see the uh, topic in unbounded operators. So, when a closely defined uh, it is a densely defined closed symmetric operator is self adjoint. Okay. There are very simple conditions to for that conclusion. Not all symmetric operators are self adjoint, so bear that in mind. So, you have to do little extra work. Okay. So, this so therefore, this uh, I Laplace n generates a unitary group. So, call it again I will denote it by u t okay. and we obtain a solution of the Schrodinger equation obtain the solution of the Schrodinger equation this is without potential Schrodinger equation. So, 1 by i del u by del t Laplacian u as u of t is equal to u t of f and of course, we have to take f in the uh, domain of the generator. So, f here it is h 2. Then we get a strong solution okay. and we have this norm of u in L 2 same as 
this is one requirement uh, from the beginning uh, we are discussing ok. So, this so u t is a semi group uh, u t is a unitary group in L 2 ok that is important ok. So, I stop here and uh, in the next class we consider uh, the Schrodinger equation with potential and for that we apply Cartos perturbation result. Thank you.